During the past years, several thousand Danish soldiers have taken part in the efforts of the United Nations to bring about a peaceful settlement of disputes between nations or population groups in Gaza, in the Congo, and on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, the slave of conflicting interests during the tides of history and civilization. The island's position between Europe and the Orient has lent it strategic importance. The Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, the Phoenicians, the Romans and the Arabs have fought over the island, for he who ruled the island ruled the sea. From 1571, the Turks ruled the island, and just under a hundred years ago, it was taken over by the British. In 1960, after bitter internal unrest, Cyprus was declared an independent state. Barely half a million Greek Cypriots and just over 100,000 Turkish Cypriots were faced with the task of adapting their dreams and hopes to this new situation. The oriental strain in the population is very pronounced. Islam was before and remains today a feature of life on the island, but it's nonetheless foreign to the Greek population. The past is reflected in the pattern of living, but the country is by no means underdeveloped. To the Greek Cypriot, the church, the Greek Orthodox Church, is a living expression of national feelings. <laughs> Turkish mosques have often been built on the ruins of former Christian churches.
Beneath an apparently carefree surface flickered the flames of discontent. Towards the end of 1963, everyday life retreated behind sandbags and barricades as the conflict between the two population groups could no longer be held in check. Many had to leave their homes to the fortunes of war. The president of Cyprus, Archbishop Max, was obliged to seek assistance for his country. In March 1964, the Security Council of the United Nations resolved to send a peace force to Cyprus. United Nations troops moved into the capital, Nicosia, and the soldiers of the participant nations were deployed all over the island in order to separate the conflicting parties. A thousand Danish soldiers formed part of the detachment. Previous experience of Danish troops in Gaza and the Congo had been very favorable, and here was a new UN peacemaking job to be tackled. The Danish contingent, known as Dancon, set up its headquarters at the Lidra Palace Hotel in Nicosia. Some of the Danish companies stayed in Nicosia itself to maintain law and order along the so-called Green Line, the dividing line between the Greek and Turkish parts of the city. Kompaniet har fået melding om, at der er bevæbnede folk nede i Jesse Casino Hotel. Hvis der er folk dernede, får vi melding her hjem. De fører patruljen til San Rosen. Værsgo, formeret, afmars. In order to keep the slightest movements on either side under strict observation, it has been necessary to establish lookout posts everywhere. The situation on the island has to be watched very carefully, reports sent in, maps drawn up. At the meeting held every morning at the headquarters of the United Nations Forces, the Commander-in-Chief and the commanders of the individual contingents are briefed on the latest development and the immediate tasks in hand. Orders and reports are sent out to the various contingents, to the Canadians at the Bay of Kyrenia, to the Irish in the Famagusta region, also as a likely invasion area and preparation of its defenses 
are a high priority at the moment. Uh, three heavy concrete emplacements are under... Control. Orders and reports are sent to the Danes, to the Swedes, to the British and the Finns, wherever they happen to be stationed on the island. Elizabeth Camp, outside Nicosia, is the Danish supply depot. Here, army life follows more or less the same pattern as at home, except for the climate. The daily round alternates between guard duties and time off. Maintenance of equipment, but in a constant state of preparedness. Members of the Danish police doing service with the United Nations civilian police. Isolated minority areas are always dependent on supplies of food. Those in Cyprus are no exception. Controlling foodstuff distribution is therefore an important task for police and soldiers alike. But the food situation is of course also of interest to the soldiers themselves. A state of readiness for immediate action means keeping both men and equipment in top form, but there's no knowing what the next job may be. <coughs> it's important, and at the same time a natural thing, that the soldiers as representatives of the United Nations should be on a good footing with the local population. The state of affairs is an unusual one, and so everybody is constantly on the alert at headquarters, at the company offices, and at the many lookout posts. Always ready for immediate action should the situation demand it. During their brief hours of leisure, the soldiers rest, relax, and learn a good deal by seeing unusual places. Excursions are arranged to points of particular interest on the island. To get up into the clear air of the Trodos Mountains is a pleasant change from the oppressive heat. Famagusta is a very popular objective for excursions too. 
And so are the ruins of Salamis, a mirage of historic prosperity and downfall. The job is a strenuous one, but also an experience. Because Denmark soldiers serving with the United Nations, whether in Cyprus or anywhere else in the world, are doing their bit to keep the peace. As is impressed upon them by their commander-in-chief. The United Nations force did not come to Cyprus in order to interfere in a local dispute. Its presence has a much deeper significance because this local dispute is threatening to develop into an international one. Our job is therefore to stop the fighting and by our very presence create a feeling of security and thus prevent a catastrophe. To prevent a catastrophe, this is the crux of the whole matter. When a lookout is able to report, all quiet, sir. The world can join his commanding officer in replying, thank you, carry on. <laughs> 